everyone. Welcome to So Lovely with Grace. I'm Grace and today I'm doing a much requested video. A tutorial on an embroidery in the hoop project, the post-it note holder that I offered in my giveaway. I offered a couple of designs, this vertical design and this horizontal design. And these designs came from a site called Moose Bee Stitching. They are an embroidery in the hoop project webpage. They have many in the hoop projects, very clever, very unique, that I've found to be very nice for gift giving. And the first project, Post-it Note Stand 1, that would be the vertical design that is purchased at their website. The second one is Post-it Note Stand 2. And these are the instructions I will be following with you today. I'm going to be making a personalized post-it note holder as a gift for my hairdresser. So at the end of the video, I will direct you and show you their website where you can find these designs. They cost $10 for each package. And each package comes with the pre-printed design words that you could have, remember this, or my notes, or you could have a blank one that's personalized. I, 99% of the time, I use the blank one and I personalize it, but you don't have to. So I'll show you their site, and also they're made with these acrylic photo frames that you could purchase at Dollar Tree or Walmart, the mainstay brand, and they're generally a dollar or two each. So let's begin. I picked out these two fat quarters since this is going to be a gift for my hairdresser. I just think it's adorable with the scissors, the hair dryer, the comb, and uh, the brush. It has a black background. And for the contrast, I'm going to use this ivory fabric. And the lettering is going to be with this contrasting red. So I think that'll work out. These are the instructions for the post-it note stand. They are made by Moose B Stitching, which is an online embroidery site where I get a lot of my in the hoop projects. So I'm following along in the instructions here of what we need. And I've already cut out the pieces. You need two 8x8 pieces of the main and one 8x8 piece of where the pocket's going to go, fold it in half. That's what the pocket's going to go, where the post-it note goes in your pen. You need one 4x6 acrylic frame that you could get these at Michael's, AC Moore, Joann's, Dollar Tree, Walmart. They're all over. And of course you need the 5x7 hoop for this design and tearaway stabilizer. I threaded the machine with the red embroidery thread and I loaded the design here and I hooped my 5x7 hoop with the tearaway stabilizer. Now this in the hoop project comes with pre-programmed lettering so you can choose from just a note, remember this, and blank or green vines or flowers. I chose blank because I want to personalize this for my hairdresser. Her name is Sierra and I'm going to have it just say Sierra's Notes. And my machine is a Baby Lock Spirit and this is my screen that has the design here and I'm going to add the lettering. Let me show you how I do that. Click Add, select the font, I want this one. And there's uppercase, lowercase, numbers, punctuation, and all kinds of other characters here. So I'm going to do uppercase Sierra C, and I want medium size. It has to fit in this red square. So I'm going to spell out her name, and then I'm going to do lowercase I E R R A. That's all medium. Apostrophe, I'm going to make small. Then I'm going to do S, which is going to be medium. And that's going to be Sierra. So I'm going to do the one word and group it together. I'm going to hit set and uh, rotate. 
rotate it 90 degrees, go down. It has to fit in this red black, so a little finagling you got to do. So I'm going to hit close and I'm going to do spacing. I'm going to shrink it a little so it fits in there just right. There you go. Might make it a little bigger and just move it. You just got to adjust it. That's why I love embroidery. You could play with it, get so creative. And that looks pretty good. Bring it down a little midway through. So that's the first Sierras. And then I'm going to add another word, notes. Same font. And I'm going to pick capital N which is going to be a medium size, just like her name. Lowercase O T E S. And I'm going to set that, rotate it 90 degrees, bring it down, bring it underneath her name, center it. Just take a look at it sideways. Looks pretty good. I might lower it a little more. Select Sierra's name and lower that. I think that looks pretty good. It's in the red block. You hit close. And then you hit embroidery. Now if you look at the top here, I don't know how clear it is for you, but it tells you how many stitches this design has. It's a small design. 2,890 stitches. The, it takes six minutes total to do this project and it has eight thread changes or eight steps. In this project I will be keeping the thread red throughout. And the first stitch that comes out of this in the hoop project is the placement line. I need to re-thread the machine. As you can see something went wrong here when I tried to uh, stitch out the placement stitch. So. I'm going to re-thread the machine now. Well, it looks like it's a bad needle. I need to change the needle because every embroidery project you really should change your needle, or at least every couple, because embroidery needles go through a lot. They get thousands and thousands of stitches. So I have these Schmetz embroidery needles. They're awesome by Floriani. So I'm going to put that on the machine now. This needle has a little flat side and it has to face back here. It has to be round facing me. So I put it in here. Just put it as far as it can go. I have this little screwdriver. Turn it. You don't want it too tight. But you want it tight enough. So yeah, that is ready to go. I have to re-thread. We'll go through here, down this way. Camera here and down and up and then down back here. Let this catch here and then turn it and cut it here. And then I just press this automatic thread button right here. And it threads the machine. So when you have many thread changes, that comes in handy. So now you can see that the start stop button here is in red. That means you can't embroider anything. It has to be green. And in order for it to start, you have to have the foot down. And then you hit start, and it will stitch out the first placement line. This placement line is for the pocket part of our post-it note holder. And I'm following the instructions. It says fold this piece once again to find the center point, which I'm going to do here. There's the center point there. And I have to place this to the left of the placement line on the embroidery hoop. So remove it. I'm going to, where that center point is, I'm going to line it up. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a mark, a tiny little mark here. And it's critical that you follow it exactly or your design will be off. It won't be centered. So I'm going to place that there. And to keep my fabric down, I use this embroidery tape. 
You can use any tape actually, but I have this and it works very well. And I just tape the sides down so nothing shifts when it's stitching out. Now the next step will stitch out the square where the lettering will belong, but I'm not going to stitch out every step in this video because it'll take too long. At this point in the instructions, since I personalized this, I need to skip all the steps and go straight to the text. So here is where I skip the spools of thread and find Sierra's name. If you can see, everything changes in this box up here. So I'm going to go here. There is her name. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to start stitching from there. So her name's going to stitch out now. Her name printed out wonderful. So now I have to clean up the stitches. These are little jump stitches and I have this nice little tweezer snips. These are great for embroidery because they're curved and you can go under the threads with them. And you can squeeze them like a tweezer. And I can't live without these with my embroidery machine. And they just do a great job to clean up all the jump stitches. And what I have to do now is remove this from the hoop, pull the tape off, and remove this piece completely without replacing the tearaway. I have to keep as much tearaway in the hoop as possible until I do the next step. I cleaned it up and I think it came out great. So now at this point I'm supposed to get the main fabric which was that this design fabric here, your fashion fabric that you want and you're supposed to place it 8 by 8 in the center of the hoop with a little more on the left side okay so and the next step is going to be the placement line for the pocket so I don't need any tape at this point I'm just going to leave it and guide it so I'm going to put the foot down and hit start I should put the placement line in next. So again, I have this fold here, and that has to match up with the notch on the guideline here. If you can see this little red notch here, it has to be in the middle, just like that. And then I put down the embroidery tape to hold it in place. So it's boxing in the text. The next step will sew the pocket to the main fabric. This step will sew the divider line. cleaned up all the threads and now the next step is to place the second piece fabric side down over the other one here. I'm going to put it back in the hoop and stitch out the next step which is going to attach this top piece to the bottom. The embroidery is complete. Now we need to remove it from the hoop, trim away the excess, and turn it right side out and insert it in, insert the acrylic frame into this and I will demonstrate that. 
So it's stitched down and attached. And what I have to do is remove everything from the hoop. I'm going to unscrew this and loosen it up. Pop it out. And this is what you get. <laughs> so what I have to do is tear away the tear away from the design. And remove all this paper everywhere you can. It's coming out pretty easy. Remove it all. So let me finish that off screen. Now I'm going to use my pinking shears to trim away the excess all the way around. Gently. I want to cut the design after all that. That would be a disaster. Okay, so I'm trimming around. And the other side. It's a lot of layers. the corners. I like to give it a little extra trim there because it gets bulky there. there. And there. And now we have to turn this out. Turn the whole thing out. And see how the pocket comes out. Let me do that off screen. With I like to use these chopsticks for the corners to poke those out. They work well. So let me do that here. So as you can see it's inside out and this is the fun part where we're going to slip the acrylic frame in here. I'll show you the next steps. Pointed out the corners and I gave it a good press and now I'm going to insert the frame into this. It's tricky because it's exactly the right size. There's no give. So it takes a little finagle in here but it should work. Just keep pulling. Pull the fabric up. It's just exactly the right size. <laughs> so, just keep going all the way to the corners. And then you turn it around. Come up here. And I need to cover the plastic or acrylic here. Make sure nothing's peeking out. And the next step is not in the instructions. This is what I do for enforcement, but I sew a seam either on the serger or the sewing machine right across here to close this off. And then I use this no sew fabric glue. I like this brand, Eileen's. And I'll show you how I do that. You can do it on the sewing machine or the serger. I'm just going to do it on the serger for now. So I just finish this edge off. Make sure I catch all of it. So that's the seam, a nice clean finish. Then we'll go over to the cutting table and I'll show you what's next. Looking good. At this point, I come over to this finished edge that we just surged or sewed or whatever is easier for you. I get a strip of this. This is Aileen's No Sew Fabric Glue. You can use any glue, I guess, fabric glue. I just like this one. I put a strip going all the way across. 
and kind of gets messy. You got to be careful. You don't want it to spread. And I just do the best I can to fold this in to the fabric. Press. You can clip extra threads or fabric that's showing. That's what our turn it under, whatever works. Let's just put a little more glue here. Turn that under. Because you want a nice clean, clean finish. And then I use these wonder clips and clip them. Just clip them here all the way across. However, just clip them all the way across and let it dry for at least an hour. And that's what I do. Looks really good. So now I'm going to remove the wonder clips and it's finished. That's it. So you can go to the Office Depot or anywhere in Dollar Tree and get some post-it notes. So you have it there. You can just stick a pen in, your favorite pen. There you go and you can write all your notes. This is the Moose Bee Stitching webpage. They have a treasure trove of in the hoop embroidery projects. I just absolutely love their projects. Now the webpage doesn't look that impressive, but what I'm impressed with is the products they have. So if you want to find those post-it note holders, you got to go here on the left side at the top. It says newest sets and they have many, many designs. Scroll down. And there it is, Post-It Stands 2, right here, and Post-It Stands 1. So the Post-It Stands 2 are the, the one I did in the tutorial, the horizontal one. And see where you get the vines with the little rose colored uh, roses. And then you get Remember This, and you get Just a Note. Those come with the package, and then you get the blank. So I usually use the blank and personalize it. You put your pens here, or markers, or crayons, and a little post-it note. These are great. You can use them in the kitchen, in the office, in your sewing room, in your car, anywhere. You want to jot down little notes. And they use the acrylic 6x4 frame here. And then here is where you order. And you click Add to Cart. And they're $10 each. But if you buy three sets, meaning any three things on their website, you pay $25. So let's go back to this page, and then there's the Post-it Stands 1, which is the uh, vertical one here. This says, don't forget, you can have your initial. The one I made for the prize is this don't forget one. And they have a blank for that one too. So that's the page. Well, I want to say I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was clear and easy to follow. And most of all, I hope you were so inspired.